Okay, teaching is really hard, and I don't know what I'm about to say. This is probably a rant, but I want to get it out. Teaching is the hardest job in the world, and people don't realize that. There are people who think that teachers are perfect, and there are people who think teachers are trash. They don't add anything. I don't know. There are people who don't like teachers because their, their educational experience has been awful. It's just a... It runs the gamut. Okay, but I'm here to tell you that teaching is the hardest job in the world. And not everybody does it well. Not everybody needs to be there. There are lots of teachers who need to go home. All right, and I am one of them because at some point I did need to go home. But before that, um, no, I need to be there. So I know now I'm rambling. There was, um, that time I told the student to shut the fuck up. That sounds awful. It sounds awful to me. I only did that one time. And it was at that point that I knew I needed to come out of the classroom. I never said that kind of thing to my own children at home. I had never said that. But in my defense, I had told that boy to stop doing that, to be quiet, to, you know, the answer to the, his question was no, he can't. I must have said that 50 times in 10 minutes. That's never happened to me at home. As a mom, I've never had that. So, yeah, I snapped. I told him to shut the fuck up, and he did, and so did everybody else in the classroom. And then the next day I came in and I apologized, but the truth is, I was wrong. Um, and, and I, and, and I was wrong in making him feel like I said that because I love you. No, I said that because I was pissed off. Um, and I said it to him because he had gotten on my nerves. So teaching is the hardest job in the world. And there was another case where I don't think I was wrong. There was a boy who came to my class maybe once a week and he was a senior in a 10th grader class and he needed to graduate and I saw him once a week and he didn't look like he had a disease you know he was like everybody else so I you know I didn't have time for that and then one day when school was over and I was leaving my room to go home I saw a woman walking down the hall toward me she was upset. I knew she was coming for me. And she looked like me. So when she came to my door, I, I had to cut it off at the path. I didn't want there to be a confrontation right there in the hallway. So when I found out, hi, what's your name? And okay, so you're looking for me? Yeah, I'm Mrs. Smith. Hold on for just a second and I can walk you. And at this point, I knew she was about to cry and she hadn't said anything yet. So this was fixing to be really bad. So I said, I put my arm, my hand on her arms. I said, okay, ho hold on. Let's go outside. We can do that. We can go for a walk and get some fresh air. Let's go out to the parking lot. And she happily said, okay. Now, the reason I did it was because I didn't want her to snap on me in the hallway. But also because I saw myself in her. She was a mom who was really upset by something that I must have done 
So as we walked out, okay, I discovered that her son was this 12th grader in my 10th grade class. And what she shared with me is that her mother was dying and she lived close to the school. So the boy, who was a grandson, always wanted to be with her and he would ditch school. But sometimes he'd come to school like halfway through the day and sometimes he wouldn't or he would go and spend the whole day with his grandmother. And um, she knew that he had to pass my class in order to graduate. So she didn't know what to do. She was there to talk to me and she was about to cry. And I could see myself in her. So he passed my class and he graduated. And I really hope that I know that they are fine. They did well. And then there was another time when there was a young man in my first period class who was a comedian and I loved him. He wasn't bad. He was just funny and he would make the class laugh, but he would get his work done too. So we had that relationship. But one day he came to class and he was manic. He was wired. He was pacing back and forth. He, I said, what's wrong? Something's wrong. You are not like this usually. Come here. So I took him outside in the hall, closed the door behind me so that my class was separated. And I said, what is wrong? And he started crying, but it was an angry cry. And he said, he beat her. She came home this morning and she looked awful. And I could tell, I knew he beat her. And she didn't want to tell me any of the details because she knew I would kill him. But he beat her. You should have seen my mama when she came home this morning. She was all bruised and he beat her. Jesus, being a teacher is the hardest thing in the world. So I knew I needed to bring him down. I needed to convince him that this was where he needed to be at school as opposed to off somewhere looking for a gun to kill this man. I convinced him or tried that his mom was okay and she was strong and she could handle it. And she wanted him to be in school because she didn't want to worry about him and the asshole who did this to her because she had to handle that. And she wanted him to be, this one, to be in school. So I needed him to settle down. I needed him to breathe. I really did. I needed him to breathe. And I don't know what came of that. You know, he stayed with me for the rest of the period. I think he stayed in school. I don't know how long that day. But I know he came to my class the next day like nothing was wrong. So I never said anything to him about it. All right. So I just want you to know that teaching is the hardest job in the world. And I only told you about three days. There's so many more.